Haggerty is the world's largest provider of specialty insurance for enthusiast vehicles and supports keeping car culture alive through youth programs, the Historic Vehicle Association, the RPM Foundation, and more. Haggerty is home to key programs such as the Haggerty Drivers Club, Haggerty Drive Share, Haggerty Valuation Tools, the Haggerty Drivers Club Magazine, and much, much more. For more information, visit their website at haggerty.com. PCA Sim Racing is proud to have Haggerty Motorsports as its 2021 title sponsor. PCA has had a long-standing tradition for innovating and since 2019, Sim Racing has been a new avenue to showcase their love for Porsche. Tonight we see the next generation of PCA champions compete as we welcome you to Podium Esports coverage of the inaugural event for the Ballast Point Entry League Series live from the virtual Long Beach Street Circuit on iRacing. Good evening, everyone. I am Taylor Burris, and our producer for tonight is none other than the fabulous Ryan Bauer, who is using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. We are excited to be here to kick things off and bring you all the action live on Podium Esports and iRacing.com forward slash live. As always, the PCA Sim Racing Series is brought to you by Haggerty. Since 1984, Haggerty has been the worldwide leader in collector car insurance. Everything they do is geared toward enabling and enhancing the experience of automotive enthusiasts and making sure that the vehicles we all love and the lifestyle that revolves around them don't just survive, but thrive well into the future. Purposes include the Haggerty Drivers Club, Drive Share by Haggerty, the shop, and much, much more to fuel your car culture. Haggerty, let's drive together. We also have to say Ballast Point is proud to support the PCA Sim Racing Entry League Series. Just like the winners raise their trophies at the finish line, Ballast Point 2 is lifting its trophy beer, Sculpin IPA. To say cheers to all of you, we're all winners at the racetrack with a Sculpin in hand. Ballast Point is celebrating independence and 25 years of craft beer all year long. Cheers to you, and cheers to the drivers in the Ballast Point Entry Level Series. As we are here live from the beautiful streets of Long Beach, this track it will provide a wonderful opportunity to test the mites of our drivers here tonight. Since 1975, racing has been well-known and well-reversed in this circuit from Formula One, Indy cars, and sports car racing, taking on this challenging 1.6-mile circuit. Of course, there are so many famous corners. We have the fountain section over there by turns two and three. And, of course, heading up and down East and West Shoreline Drive, Seaside Way, and the infamous Turn 11. That will provide a lot of great passing opportunities as well as some interesting scenarios that we will see these young up-and-coming PCA drivers have to overcome. Currently right now, qualifying is underway. There you'll see Ronald Malaya from the Hill Country region is out on track. 
But as they are working their way through qualifying, we have ourselves a very special guest joining us here tonight. He is the vice president of Ballast Point Brewing. Al Ubeta joins us. And as we get Al set up here, there he is. Al, welcome up to the broadcast booth here as we get set to start the Ballast Point Entry Level Series at Long Beach. How are you tonight? Uh, let's try one more time at make sure his microphone is working. Al, do you have a copy? And we'll come back to Al here momentarily. But as we take a look at qualifying, drivers are starting up their qualifying attempts. They'll give about four laps before we determine the starting lineup for tonight as you're on board with up-and-coming driver Michael Lang from the Potomac region. As he works his way through turns 10 and then approaching turn 11, a great onboard camera view as we see how he's able to negotiate. This will be his starting lap to start in car 402 with the PFC sponsorship on there as he works his way to start lap number one in the 402 Porsche. Now the Porsche, the Porsches that we're using here tonight is one of the newest additions to the iRacing service, the Porsche 911 GT3R, a well-known car that we see in many forms of GT competition, whether it be in IMSA or SRO competition, as well as many other Porsche make series all across the world. It has collected several victories in major motorsports events since its inception. And we are going to be right back momentarily. We're going to take you on board with Michael as he works his way through here on this lap. And we'll try to make sure Al is good to go. As we see here, he's just finished up his lap. We now have Al Ubeta joining us. Al, once again, welcome here for the for opening round at Long Beach. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, and I hope all the racers are as well. Well, they certainly are doing quite well in qualifying. The first and foremost that I want to talk about is what is Ballast Point Brewing, and how did it start? Uh, Bells Point Brewing is a now 25-year-old brewing company. It started out of the back of a homebrew shop uh, down here in, in San Diego. Um, you know, we had uh, some founders that were frustrated they couldn't find quality ingredients for their home brewing, so they went off and, you know, started a business to to share the the hobby of home brewing with other folks. So, you know, education and kind of accessibility has always been at the hallmark of the Ballast Point way. Um, and you know they started the brewery in the back of that little uh, that little shop, and um, you know, it's grown into to what it is today. It certainly has a wonderful 25 years of excellent choices of IPAs and other types of brews. But the one thing I'm interested about is the, what inspired Ballast Point Brewing to get involved with sim racing, such as here with the PCA. Um, the marketing department owed me a favor, so that's that's why we're here. Um, you know I. I, I'm an, I would say, avid um, sim racer. I started last year during the, the pandemic, like um, some other people did, I'm sure. And, um, you know, when, when Doug mentioned the possibility of having an entry league series where there was more training and some onboarding for folks, you know, that just fit with, you know, the, the natural way that we try to approach craft beer and help people understand what craft beer is and understand what, what home brewing is. And, um, yeah, it just felt like a, a natural thing for us to do. It certainly is. And of course, one thing we got to talk about is we're here at Long Beach. And one of the things that I found interesting when doing some research about it is that you have a tasting room location here at Long Beach, not too far from the circuit. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, as well as some other th reasons of your partnership here at the Long Beach Street Circuit? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, our, our location is actually a, a very quick um, water taxi ride away from uh, 
from the Long Beach circuit when uh, when it's up and running. Um, that's how I got back and forth from the track to uh, to our Long Beach location last week. We actually have five tasting rooms across uh, California, uh, three in the San Diego area, um, one in downtown Disney, the Long Beach location, and we're opening a new one in San Francisco. That should open um, sometime next year. But um, yeah, the, the choice of Long Beach, and, and I know it's probably a somewhat controversial one for the drivers who are faced with, you know, bumpy surfaces and concrete everywhere and trying to figure out steering lock, is we were the craft beer sponsor for the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach a couple of weeks ago. So the timing was such that it, uh, it made sense to try to make that, um, that tie-in. It certainly is. And I got to say, looking at some of the choices of beers that you guys have in IPAs, the, the new ones that I saw were phenomenal. But also you have some other special events and very interesting things that I've noticed. One I noticed was, of course, the Ballast Point Brewing Autumn Reef Festival that you have on October 12th. And then there is also a painting and pints event that you guys have coming up. Yeah, we, we like to, uh, to mix it up and, you know, have things that are more than just sitting around and drinking beer. You know, again, it's it's an opportunity to, to maybe get into a new hobby, um, one that, that isn't quite as uh, engaging as sim racing is, obviously. But, um, yeah, we, we like to, to offer folks, you know, something to do. Long Beach is a fantastic location right on the water. You can really just sit there and enjoy the company of, of your friends and enjoy the view. But, um, yeah, it's, all, it's always nice to, uh, to have a little something to do with the hands. Certainly is indeed. And finally, Al, as we conclude this interview, where can people go to learn more about Balance Point Brewing? Um, like everything else, just go to the internet, um, ballastpoint.com. And um, you can actually search by location for the various events, um, or you can you know, drill down through uh, the various beers we have on offer. Um, you can see the tap list, I think, from each of the locations. So if you're looking for something special, you can find it there. All right. Well, Al, thank you so much for joining us here as we get ready to see the season opener for the Ballast Point Brewing Entry Series for the PCA as qualifying is rounding up. And of course, that is Al Ubeta, who is the vice president of Ballast Point Brewing. Qualifying is just almost has been completed here. A couple of cars still have yet to qualify as they are working their way through. You're on board with car number 21, Brad Boyd from the Hill Country region. He currently is trying to get a qualifying lap in. He's yet to get a time, and as he does, he moves up to the 16th spot. So a great attempt for his qualifying. Thomas Briggs is well trying to get himself situated. Chris Sayer. And of course, from the Golden Gate region, P8 right now, so a strong run for him in that Porsche. And as the clock continues to wind down, one minute left to go. There's a section right there that drivers are going to have to definitely be careful in negotiating the fountain section, which is going to be very tight, very articulated, where drivers have to hit their breaking points to the utmost in order to survive. And as we see Chris working his way down West Shoreline Drive out of turn five, heading into turn six, which we'll see on board has to get right up against the wall in order to set up for the next corner turn number eight which will then set you down the east side seaside way which is a long straightaway that will allow drivers the opportunity to set up passes before they enter into turn number nine of course some of the speeds that these drivers will be carrying is going to be absolutely phenomenal speeds over 130 miles an hour before entering into the braking zone will be very critical for these drivers in order to hit their braking points as they prepare here today. And with that, qualifying has just been completed and we will give you your 24 car starting lineup for today's action. Starting on the pole in, with a 120.073, it is Mark Lacombe who will be starting in car number 19. Second place is James Frasnick in that number with a time of 120.096. Phenomenal times by both those two drivers. Third place will be Charles Vieri in the 23, followed by Dominic Livernois in the number two in fourth position. Running at your top five will be Fred Chin, followed by John Gibson in sixth position. Jose Souza will be starting in 7th, followed by Chris Sayerier, first three in the 8th spot. Graham Rennie will be starting in the ninth position, rounding out your top 10, Ronald Malaya. 11th 
As we move to 11th is Josh Carson, followed by Michael Lang in the 12th spot. Steve Lenz will be starting in 13th, followed by Steve Komax in the 15th position. Brad Boyd will be starting in the 16th spot, followed by Tom Farfaris in 17th. David Sell will be the last car to set a qualifying time, and then the rest of the field has not yet set a time. Thomas Briggs will be starting in 19th. Rounding out your top 20 is Martin Gibbons. Vincent Parnell will be starting in 21st, followed by Tim Sherrock in 27th. Randy Lervold will be starting in 23rd, and riding shotgun Art Schwartz in car number 7 in 24th. Field lines up behind the Porsche pace car that will lead them towards the back half of the circuit. Currently right now they are stationed just towards right before they enter turn number nine. So a great opportunity for drivers to get themselves set, ready to go here momentarily as they will lead the way through. As we'll see, the Porsche safety car now lead the field down into turns 9. It's going to be a quick pace lap. Only turns 9, 10, and 11 is where these drivers will be under pace speeds before turn lose for the next 30 minutes or 23 laps here tonight as they work their way through the streets of Long Beach. As they work out of turn number 11, they're going to get themselves set up here. A little bit of interesting situation as they get themselves lined up. But we're happy that you joined us here tonight from the streets of Long Beach as Mark Lacombe and James Frasnick will lead them to the green flag here at Long Beach across the line as they work their way down towards the East Shoreline Drive. James. James Frasnick will lead them down into turn one for the first time at speed. He is able to get through cleanly as we have a little chaos towards the back half of the field. Multiple cars have turned around, but as we watch on, a new driver has moved up into second place. That's Dominic Liveros, who was able to avoid the chaos and now has to chase down James Frasnick from the Sun Coast, Florida region. Fred Chin now has worked his way up to fifth position after the incident that happened heading into turn one from the Las Vegas region. He is trying to see if he can catch down to Chris Sari, who is in the fourth spot. As Sari loops it around, that will give the spot to Fred Chin. Chen will move up to the fourth spot now, setting his sights on a podium position with John Gibson in the third spot as they work their way down towards East Seaside Way, heading towards turn number nine. Drivers are hitting the braking zone into turn number nine before working their way up to turn 10. As we see James Frasnick, your race leader, work his way out of turn number 11 and has pulled a one and a half second lead over Dominic Livernos as we're on board with James Krasnick from the Sun Coast, Florida region. As you're on board with Michael Lang from the Potomac region, now in eighth position, has made some gains since the drop of the green flag, as he is currently started 12, so gained four spots, so a great effort for him as he's trying to hold up a couple of other competitors. That's Steve Cummett. Comments, as well as jo Johan Nye in 9th and 10th. As Michael had a little bit of a problem, we will see now our race leader, Jane Frasnick, working his way up to the tail end of some lap traffic. On board with Dominic Livernois, as from the, from the southeast Michigan region. Zone 4 is currently chasing down your race leader, so we could have a wonderful battle between your top two. Lap traffic is approaching our race leaders as they work their way through down the back straightaway into turn nine. A beautiful pass for those two as they work their way past. I believe that's going to be Martin Gibbons in the 22 Porsche who sits 22nd. Here they come through turn 11. Your race leaders, a great line exiting out of turn number 11. There you saw John Gibson and Fred Chin right there as they battle for third. 
On board with Fred Chin now from the Las Vegas region has worked his way up to the fourth position after passing a couple of cars as he works his way up to catch the back bumper of John Gibson in the 20 who sits in third about half a second up the road as they enter turn one a big send down into turn one you have to be so careful entering this braking zone because you can easily overshoot and go into that runoff section as they work through turns two and three of the mountain they now work through turn four great onboard camera here on fred chin as he hunts down john gibson as they come down west shoreline drive there you see the roller coaster right there and as they approach turn number six and seven, you have to be careful when exiting out of this because you can easily just run right up against the wall or loop it around as they approach turn number eight, another danger zone because there you see that tire barrier, how close you can easily hit it if you're not careful with your corner exit as you're on board with Fred Chin for the Las Vegas region, zone eight. Having a stellar run right now inside the top five as he's trying to see if he can get a podium position here in his debut. Working their way through out of turn number 11. This is the best battle that we have on the track between these two along with your battle for the lead between Thrasnik and Dominic Livernos. And then of course you have this battle for third between Gibson and Chin. Here's a battle right now for the eighth position between Johan Nye and Ronald Malaya. Ronald from the Hill Country region in that number five Porsche. And then there you'll see the 141 of Johan Nye just in front of him. He also has Brad Boyd behind him in car 21, I believe. As they work down East Shoreline Drive, approaching into turn number one. Excellent job on the braking. They'll work their way up to the fountain through turns two and three. A little bit wide right there for, of course, Ronald Malaya, but is able to recover nicely to stay hot on the trail of Johan Nye as they come out of turn number five. You're on board with Malaya. He gets a great run out of turn five. He's going to duck to the inside and see if he has an opening. Not quite enough. He'll come through turn six, still trying to stay within the right there on the back bumper of Nye as they come out of turn seven down this little short shoot into turn eight. You'll also see 25 of Thomas Briggs right there. And so it's a four-car battle for the eighth position by the looks of it as you're on board with Thomas Briggs in car number 25 in 11th position. Briggs started 19th, so has gained eight spots since the drop of the green flag. So a big-time gain of runs here for Thomas Briggs, of course, from the Maverick region. So a Texan native. As we go back up to the race lead, James Frasnick leads the way. There in second is once again Dominic Livernois, Liver who is trying to see if he can work his way through and catch up to James Frasnick. Currently the gap is 1.2 seconds, but these are the only two that are going to be battling for the race lead. They have a 10 and a half second lead over John Gibson in third position. There you see him trying to hold off the Las Vegas native of Fred Chin in the fourth position. Working their way down Seaside Way as they approach turn number nine. Noticing the speeds right now that these Porsches are carrying 140 miles an hour before entering the braking zone that time by. Of course, Seaside Way is a great passing opportunity and utilizing the slipstream in order to set up a pass before entering into turn number nine. As they work to turn 11, this is the opportunity. Contact is made, but they're able to, oh, no, Chin is able to keep going. Unfortunate though for Gibson, he looped it around, but he will continue on here. These drivers do have a pass repair which for those of you who are new to the world of high racing, they is means if your car is damaged, all you have to do is come down pit road, exit out of your vehicle, a new one will be immediately ready for you, and they have five fast repairs. So that means that they can continue throughout this entire race. As we see on the clock, 22 minutes and a 22 minutes are just about on the clock. As the time continues to click now, we have completed six laps so far as Frasnik is trying to pull away uh, with his lead of 1.4 seconds from Dominic Livernois. As Dominic actually gets the race lead away from James Frasnik, what happened to Frasnik? Did he make a mistake? 
The answer is he did going into turn number eight. He made a small error where he just overshot it a little bit and was able to continue on. No major damage. He's still going to try and hunt down Dominic for the race lead. As we see Dominic leading here at Long Beach, our second lead change of the night as they work their way down the shoreline way. Great racing action here for the Ballast Point Brewing Entry Level Series. Of course, this is the entry level for the PCA. There are so many other great racing action when it comes to PCA. In fact, on Wednesday night, we had our Challenge and Sports Class competing over at Barber Motorsports Park, a great racing rate that we saw. And then, of course, tomorrow night, we'll see the Club and Pro Class Series competing forward at Barber. So you can catch all the action on PCA Sim Racing website as well as their YouTube channel starting at 9 o'clock. On board with car number 19, Mark Lacombe. He was our pole sitter. He has fallen back to 18th, one lap down, not having the best of nights for him so far. Looking to see if he can try and overcome any opportunity to get back at least on the lead lap is going to be a tall order for him but mark definitely trying to see what he can do as he is able to move up a couple of spots after falling back to 19 as he's trying to chase down car number 71 that's david sell that's the first car one lap down he's currently over at turn 11 trying to get himself going as here comes Lacombe through turn 11 as well. So he's making some steady gains to the back bumper of that 71 Porsche has trouble. They're entering turn eight. We'll take a look at that later, but it looks like Ronald Malaya has the issue. As we now see, we'll see here. This is Thomas Briggs who is out on the track competing here. He is from the Maverick region. P9 has worked his way up through the field here today. As he will come down pit road to get needed required service, he is gonna see what he can do here later on. We'll go back up to our race leader who has now a 1.7 advantage over James Frasnick, Dominic Livernois, who has pulled away beautifully here in the stages. Looking through to see if we have any more exciting battles. We have a battle for seventh position between Brad Boyd and John Gibson going down right now. You're going to be on board here with John Gibson. Of course, John is having a strong run as we take a look at him. He's going to look to the inside as they enter turn number seven. There's John from the Rally Sport region. Makes a beautiful pass over Brad Boyd to get that seventh spot away. There's John is running those flying lizard colors, a well-known Porsche livery as we're on board with Graham Remy from the Canada West region, zone number one. One of the most biggest zones represented in the PCA. As we're seeing here, he's working on one of the cars that's a lap, that's actually a pass for position for 17th. That's Tom Farfaris in that fast motorsports colored plaid Porsche. As they work up to the top of the fountain, here you're back on board with Brad Boyd battling back on John Gibson. Brad, of course, from the Hill Country region. And then there you're back on board with John Gibson in the Flying Lizard Motorsports car. As they work down Shoreline Drive and then heading up to the fountain as they work their way into turn number one. Will Brad try to send it in? Nope, decides to think better of it, follow through as they go underneath the Bubba Burgers Bridge and work up to the beautiful fountain corner. Coming up on 17 and a half minutes left to go. 10 laps have been completed here tonight at the streets of Long Beach. There you see John Gibson moving up to the sixth position. 
There you see Dominic Literal who makes a little bit of contact to the concrete walls here at Long Beach as he tries to work his way up to the back bumper of some lap traffic. He will complete the pass before they enter up to turn number six. Such grace racing here as we see our race leader work his way up through turn seven, now heading into turn number eight. He's pulled away by 4.8 seconds. Beautiful drive for Dominic. Was setting the fastest times in practice earlier on with a 118.93. His best time tonight so far, a 119.405. As we see another driver, Tim Sharrock, in the fifth position now with the Gold Coast region driver as he works his way through. Some lap traffic trying to hunt down. That is going to be Jose Souza, who's about seven seconds up the road in the fourth position in that beautiful Martini livery Porsche paint scheme. Of course, Martini, a well known livery and paint scheme that we see on many of the Porsches back in the 70s and 80s. As he works by the lap car, ooh, a little bit of a close call right there. Was able to gather it back up and continue on as he will finally get away and get around that lap car. On board with Michael Lang from the Potomac region, working his way all by his lonesome right now. As Michael has gained his way back up to the 13th position, trying to catch up to Mark Lacombe, who is about two and a half seconds up the road. And as they work their way out of the fountain through turn four, a great drive for him after having some incidents early on in the going. And as we see the action here at the Long Beach Street Circuit, of course, this is the 30-minute race. And as we know, we are about to cross over the halfway point of tonight's race. And that means one thing. It is time to bring you the Midway Race Report brought to you by Ballast Point Brewing Company. Ballast Point Brewing Company is based in San Diego, California. Ballast Point Brewing started in 1996 as a small group of home brewers who simply wanted to make great beer, evolved into the team of adventurers known as Ballast Point, a pioneering brewery born 25 years ago with the hallowed hops walls of San Diego's homebrew mart. The complete art of the craft swims in the DNA of Ballast Point and informs both what's inside and on the can. From bringing a hoppy twist to a porter or adding four types of malts to his amber ale to creating the breakthrough gold medal winning Sculpin IPA, Ballast Point is known for adding its touch and asking if there's a better way. For more information on Ballast Point Brewing Company, including a list of tasting room locations, visit their website at www.ballastpoint.com. Of course, right now, currently leading the way is Dominic Livernois from the Southeast Michigan region, having a strong performance as he has maintained the race lead here for the past few laps. Second position is James Frasnick, who took the lead on the opening laps from the Suncoast Florida region. And that number 76 red, black and white Porsche, having a quiet night, made a small mistake, but was able to still hold on to second position. We have to go another 12 seconds back to Las Vegas region's very own Fred Chin in car number 18. Fred having a strong run in that beautiful white, black, and green Porsche livery as he is trying to hunt down and stay in the podium contention. Fourth position from the Carolinas region, Jose Souza in the green, yellow, and black paint scheme. In the car 103, having a quiet night after starting in the seventh position. Our biggest mover of the night goes to Tim Sharrock from the Gold Coast region, started 22nd. That Martini Porsche definitely showcasing its talent as it's moved up to the fifth position. Moving back to sixth position, the Rally Sport region of John Gibson, another iconic Porsche Flying Lizard Sports, has started sixth, he's a sixth position. Seventh is none other than Thomas Briggs from the Maverick region. That's deep in the heart of Texas. He started at 16th. And we're actually in the 18th position. 
up quite well. Next up is car 20. That is Brad Boley from the Hill Country. Agent, a strong performance as he started in the seventh position and has moved up eight spots since the start of tonight's race. Next car is the ninth place up from the Potomac region, Charles Fieri, in that pink and vibrant Porsche. As he has worked his way up through the field, he started third, so has dropped some spots, but has gained his way back into the top ten. Rounding out your top ten from the Golden Gate region is Chris Sari, who is currently trying to work his way back up through the field after starting in eighth position. In the 11th spot, he is your first spur, but has fallen back after some incidents. Pacific Northwest Region driver Mark Lacombe leads it away as he rounds out your top 10 and moves on. Next up is Michael Lang. He's now moved up to 11th position as Chris Sari had an incident on track. The Potomac Region driver had a quiet night after starting in 12th. Next up on the field is Graham Rennie from the Canada West region. Graham, he started inside the top 15, has moved up quite well as he has moved back into 12th position. 13th is Art Schwartz. He's another one of our biggest movers after starting 24th. The Potomac region driver now sits 13th. As we now move to P14, that is Johan Nye from the Potomac region. Johan started just around the 15th spot, has moved his way back into 14th. Next up from the Upper Canada region, Tom Farfaris is in that number four Bath Motorsports livery paint scheme. As the plaid Porsche works his way into turn number six, working to see if he can make his way up through the field. 16th from the northern New Jersey region is Steve Lim in that beautiful Gulf livery Porsche. As he's having a quiet night, working his way up into turn one, trying to see if he can gain a few more spots before tonight's race is over. 18th is David Sell from the central Indiana region in that all black number 71 Porsche. 19th is Ronald Malaya from the Hill Country region. And that number five, he had some trouble or late in the going, but is looking forward to see if he can improve. Branding out your top 20 is Randy Lerbold from the Pacific Northwest region, car number 11. Randy's had a little bit of trouble, but has gained his way back inside the top 20. 21st is Steve Kovacs from the Rocky Mountain region and that beautiful Gray, black, blue, white, and black Porsche with a Sparco livery on there, having a great run so far here tonight. 22nd goes to Josh Carson from the Pacific Northwest region, trying to just log some laps and learn a little bit more about this track and bring home a finish here in one piece as he is having a quiet night in 22nd. 23rd is Martin Gibbons there, as you will see him work his way through. One more car is also on the track, or not in the race right now. That's Vincent Parnell, who rounds out your 24-car field. And with that, this concludes tonight's Midway Race Report, brought to you by Ballast Point Brewing Company. As we continue here seeing all the racing action, Eight and a half minutes left to go. James Frasnick trying to see if he can catch up to Dominic Livinoir as he is working his way through turn 11. He has 10 and a half seconds to catch up, but it's going to be a tall order here in the closing stages tonight. As they work their way, fourth down shoreline drive, Brad Boyd trying to work his way to the back bumper of Charles Fieri as they battle for eighth position. Boyd goes a little bit wide, has to go to the outside. That's the inside advantage now as they enter into turn number one. He gets back in line as they enter the braking zone. A beautiful racing action here in the late stages. Brad just really sawing on that wheel, holding on here for dear life as they come through turns four and approaching turn number five. 
They have quite a ways before they can catch up to Thomas Briggs. So that's a lap car in front of them. That's Tom Farfaris, who is one lap down or two laps down ahead of them as they enter into turn six and seven. As they crest over the little hill right there and enter turn number eight as they head down Seaside Way. Ferrieri scrapes the tire barrier just a little bit, but it continues on as we go back to our race leader, Dominic is leading the way, Dominic Livernois, who is currently has a 10.7 second advantage. A beautiful drive for him, was able to take the lead after a mistake from James Frasnick and has never looked back. What he needs to do is definitely coming out to play here and working his way through the tight twists and turns of the Long Beach Street Circuit. As he approaches the fountain corner of turns two and three, coming out of there beautifully as he comes out of turn entering turn number four. Looking through the field right now, we still have that battle between John Gibson and Thomas Briggs. Briggs is trying to find a way around Gibson as they head down into turn number eight before they head seaside way. You wanna hug that corner as tight as you can without clipping the wall or hitting the tire barriers off corner exit. Very critical to hit your marks through here as we head down Seaside Way, hitting speeds of over 130 before entering turn nine. Hugs that corner beautifully to try to catch up to his competitor of Gibson as they approach turn number 11. Could we see a pass for position as they come out of there? And the answer is not quite yet. He has five minutes and 45 seconds left to go on the clock for him to make a count. Thomas Briggs trying to work his way, utilizing the slipstream to try to close the gap between him and Gibson as they come down entering turn one. He backs it off in order to make the corner, works his way through turns two and three, just barely inches away from those concrete walls as they work their way through tight, close racing action here in the closing stages. As they head down West Shoreline Drive, approaching turn six and seven, they have some more traffic up ahead of them. That is lap traffic that they're going to have to negotiate. As they are currently the last cars on the lead lap. John Gibson, you're on board with him as he sees a very close Porsche of Thomas Bricks try to close the gap between him and as they work out at turn number eight, heading down the East Source Shore Seaside Way, working their way to turn number nine. As they come out of turn 10, approaching turn 11, here comes a big send by Briggs. He can't quite make it stick. Here comes your race leader right behind them. That's Dominic right there in the mix. So this is going to be putting these two a lap down possibly, but Dominic does have enough positioning to stay ahead of his competitor of James Frasnick as Fred Chin comes down pit road. That moves both of those two drivers up a position. Move John Gibson into the fifth position, Briggs to six. Four minutes left to go on the clock as more lap traffic for your race leader, Dominic Livernois, as they come through turn number four. He has to be careful on where to put his car to negotiate this lap traffic out of turn five. He stays right behind Briggs, who lets him by. Now sets his sight on Gibson in the fifth spot as they approach turn number six and seven. Beautiful job that Dominic has been doing, has made hardly no mistake, which is so critical as a couple of cars go around, contact is made, he was able to easily negotiate the incident and continue pressing forward. Dominic Livernois has had a stellar run, has had some close calls and has made it through beautifully throughout the race as he tries to find a way around John Gibson and another Porsche that's ahead of him. I believe that is the Gulf livery Porsche of Steve Lins, who now enters into the 16th position. Just under three minutes left to go here in the closing stages at the streets of Long Beach. Steve Lins lets our race leader by. Dominic Livernois tries to hold on just a little bit longer as he's working away to round John Gibson. 
John Gibson having a stellar run trying to hold off the race leader to stay on the lead lap. Currently four cars are on the lead lap. John Gibson is the last one trying to hold on to that position as they enter up to turn six. Liver Noir would send it up the inside, but Gibson shuts the door on him as they go by a slow car. Right there, close call for Liver Noir. He almost made contact, but was able to avoid him as they come out of turn number eight, heading down Seaside Way. On board with Dominic as he tries to see if he can claim a victory here tonight on the streets of Long Beach through turn nine. Dominic just needs to be patient, pick and choose when the opportune time is to pass as he sends it deep into turn 11. Will he make it stick? The answer is yes. Contact though is made for your race leader. He's got to back up quickly in order to try to maintain the race lead. Where is Frasnik? Frasnik just now comes out of turn number 11. The gap has shrunk to 3.2 seconds. And just when you think it could get more interesting, it certainly does here. A minute and 15 seconds left to go. Dominic has right now a two and a half second lead and closing Frasnik, working everything that he can to close the gap between him and the race leader. Through turns three and four, they'll go. More contact for your race leader. Frasnik takes over the race lead. James Frasnick doing what he needs to do now, uh, capitalizing on mistakes, and he will pull away with the race lead. Dominic Livernois has definitely has to try to find something in order to try to regain the race lead, but it might be too little too late. 30 seconds left to go on the clock. This will be the final lap here by the looks of things as they come out of turn nine down Seaside Way as James Frasnick in car 76 works underneath the bridge. 20 seconds left to go on the clock. He's entering turn nine now. It's gonna be oh so close for him. Will he have to run another lap or does he get the checkered flag here? Through turn 10, he'll go out into turn 11, tries to slow it down and maintain the lead. Here he comes out of the final corner. Three, two, one. This should be it. The white flag is out. He's out for the race leader. So he has one more lap to go. As he works his way through, has to work his way through turns two and three, just be clean and smooth, and he will be able to maintain this and hold on to the race lead. A beautiful drive for James Frasnick. James Frasnick just trying to just survive this last lap here on the streets of Long Beach. A beautiful effort, a beautiful drive as he was able to capitalize on the mistakes of others and be able to lead where it counts. He'll come out of turn number eight for the final dime through Seaside Way as he approaches turn nine. Through turn 10 and turn 11 for the final time. He had a little bit of lap traffic, but is going to be able to overcome it. He'll dive it to the inside of a lap car. James Frasnick will be the first time winner here in the Ballast Point Brewing Entry Level PCA Series event at Long Beach. Checkered flag is in the air. The Suncoast Florida region driver will win in beautiful sunny California and take home the win here on the streets of Long Beach as Dominic Livernois will come home second. Jose Souza looking like he is going to round out your podium finishers here tonight. Give a chance for Souza to come across the line here and then after that, we will go ahead and give you your full field rundown as well as interview our podium finishers here momentarily as we look forward to the exciting season that lays ahead before us. Jose Souza now coming through turns 10 and 11 for the final time. A podium finisher here on his debut as Jose Souza will come across the line. Checkered flag is in the air.
And with that, we are going to take a commercial break. But don't worry. When we come back, we will give you the full field rundown as well as speak with our top three finishers. You are watching the Ballast Point Entry Level Series live on Podium Esports Network. Haggerty is the world's largest provider of specialty insurance for enthusiast vehicles and supports keeping car culture alive through youth programs, the Historic Vehicle Association, the RPM Foundation, and more. Haggerty is home to key programs such as the Haggerty Drivers Club, Haggerty Drive Share, Haggerty Valuation Tools, the Haggerty Drivers Club Magazine, and much, much more. For more information, visit their website at haggerty.com. PCA Sim Racing is proud to have Haggerty Motorsports as its 2021 title sponsor. Welcome back to Podium Esports coverage of the Balance Point Entry League Series presented by Haggerty Motorsports as well as Ballast Point Brewing Company. Here is your finishing results. James Frasnick is your race winner, followed by Dominic Livernois in second position. Jose Souza will come home in third, followed by Thomas Brigg in fourth position. Tim Chirac will be the last car on the lead lap, rounding out your top five. John Gibson, the first car, one lap down, followed by Michael Lang in seventh position. Eighth position goes to Fred Chin, followed by Mark Lacombe, our pole sitter, coming home in ninth. Graham Rennie rounds out your top ten. Coming home in the 11th position is Charles Fieri, followed by Brad Boyd in 12th position. Johan Nye will come home in 13th, followed by Art Schwartz in 14th position. 15th goes to Tom Farfaris, followed by Steve Linz in 16th. Ronald Malaya will come home in 17th, followed by Randy Lervold in the 18th position. Chris Sari will come home in 19th. Steve Komatz rounds out your top 20. 21st goes to Josh Carson, followed by David Sell in 22nd. Martin Gibbons comes home 23rd. Vincent Parnell did not start in 24th. First up we have is a ecstatic James Farasnik. James, you take home the debut win here for the Ballast Point Entry League. How do you feel? As we double check to make sure, James, do you have a copy? We'll, we'll maybe try to come back to James here momentarily. Let's try to see if we can get another driver. Let's get third place finisher Jose Souza next from the Carolinas region. Jose, do you have a copy? Yes, I do have a copy. Thank you. Of course. Well, Jose, how do you feel about your podium finish here live at the streets of Long Beach? I was sweating. I thought I was going through an out of gas. I finished the race with 0.3 on my tank, and it was it was not an easy one coming through the field with so many people being lapped. Great race today. Talk to a little bit about the difficulties of racing here at the streets of Long Beach. This track has even given some of the biggest names in motorsports a hard time. So that turn 11, it is the most difficult one. It is not being able to see what is ahead of you, hearing there is a car there. It's always difficult to know exactly where the car is. Got to be extremely careful and slow down, slow down and be prepared for it. But uh, amazing track, has a very bumpy, uh, some bumpy corners uh, and uh, some very challenging corners uh, to go around. But a really, really good race, a good track to, to race. It certainly is. Well, Jose, before we let you go, anyone you would like to say thank you to? Thanks for all you guys that have been organizing this amazing um, experience of the PCA Sim Racing. It's a lot of work, and you guys are doing all of this uh, with your own time, so I appreciate all the support here. Of course, that is Jose Souza from the Carolinas region. He comes home in third position. 
as we get ready. We're going to try to see if we can get with our race winner, James Frasnick, once again. Nope, we actually, we actually, we actually have Tim Chirac, who comes home in the fifth position from the Gold Coast region. Tim, strong performance here. How do you feel with this fifth place finish after starting towards the back? <laughs> yeah, it was a challenge getting up front. And I was happy with the results, considering I, I started in the back. But uh, I'm starting to like this track a lot. It's a fun track once you get used to it. What was one of the most exciting moments for you racing here at this circuit tonight? Oh, I think just the challenge of racing with other people in the, you know, the PCA and trying to put on a fairly good performance. I had a couple little spin outs, but I recovered and came back. So I was happy with that. But uh, well, Tim, before, well, Tim, before we let you go and yeah. enjoy this top five, anyone you would like to give a thank you to or a shout out to? Well, especially Doug Atkinson for all the work he's doing to put this together. It's not easy. It's a huge coordination effort. And um, other than that, just um, pretty much everybody I'm racing with, I thought everybody was pretty good about clearing out, getting out of the way and driving with some consideration for other drivers. So happy. All right, well, we look forward to seeing you at the next round, Tim. That is Tim Chirac, who comes home in the fifth position. And with that, we will try to see if our race winner, James Frasnick, is available. James, are you uh, have a copy? Yeah, I'm here. Awesome. Well, James, congratulations on taking home the opening round as here at the Ballast Point Entry League. Your thoughts on winning at this circuit that has provided so many challenges for some major names in motorsports? Um, well, I was behind Dominic the entire time, so I didn't even see that I passed him. I just I thought I was in second. Um, yeah, I don't. It's a I don't. It's a good track. I mean, I was practicing Chicago a lot because I had a lot of issues with just ninety degree turns. I don't know if I fixed that, but. I know I set my personal best on a couple laps in the race. I hadn't broken 120 before, so that was pretty cool. Certainly was a great drive for you. You did get to lead a little bit, and of course you led where it counted the last few minutes here of the race. As you look ahead through the rest of the season, do you feel like you have what it takes to possibly collect another victory as we head once again to another California circuit, Laguna Seca? Uh, I don't know, man. I'm just I'm practicing for real life. I got Sebring in a couple weeks again, and I'm I'm taking my car out there. So this is the only practice I get for real life. So yeah, that's I mean that's really all I'm working on. But it's fun. I really like I really enjoy like the races you put together because I know when I first started i racing, like it was just a complete disaster. Like I turned audio off because people kept swearing at me and people kept threatening to report me. And I was like, yeah, this is not fun. So. But yeah, I, like I really appreciate what you guys are doing, man. It's um, it's really well done, well put together. Well, James, before we let you go, anyone you would like to say thank you to? Uh, um, uh, the only question I had um was just I thought you had damage control dis or uh disabled, but then it was I saw that uh, damage was not enabled. Did that make sense? Yes, it did. Yes, uh, you'll have to maybe check with the race officials on that matter. Okay. Yeah, no, I just, I want to, I don't know, just thank like the guys that are in the Discord chat for just, you know, advice and stuff like that on how to get better. That everything always helps. All right. Well, congratulations on your victory. And we look forward to seeing you at the next round at Laguna Seca. That is James Frasnick, your race winner here tonight at Long Beach. We have one more driver to speak with. That is Dominic Livernois. Dominic, can you explain what happened in those closing stages here tonight? Honestly, I, I just got overwhelmed with lap cars. Oh, you still came home with a strong P2 finish. Can you explain to our listeners, you know, the difficulty of racing here at this circuit, as well as the fun that it is at racing at Long Beach? It's a really tiny track and you're driving a pretty big car, which does add to the fun of it. But at the same time, it's a pretty challenging track. And, you know, lap cars not giving enough space. You know, even when they're trying their best, it's, Probably not enough because of how small the track is, but, you know, it was a fun race. I enjoyed it. Well, Dominic, before we let you go and celebrate this podium finish, anyone you would like to say thank you to? Uh, yeah, all my Southeast Michigan Porsche Club members. All right. Well, congratulations on your podium finish. That is Dominic Livenois, who comes home P2. And with that, 
It is time that we come to a close for tonight's broadcast, but don't worry. We will be back next Thursday night on October 14th as we travel a little bit up towards Monterey Bay for the next round at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Of course, you can catch all the action around 9 p.m. Eastern time. But of course, the next PCA Sim Racing event will be Series 7, event number 2 for the PCA Club and Pro Classes on Friday, October 8th at Barber Motorsports Park. Catch all the action at 9 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, PCA Sim Racing Channels, and iRacing.com forward slash live. A big thank you to the steering committee at PCA Sim Racing. Also, a huge thank you to our team tonight, Ryan Bauer and Dougie Beard. And none of this is possible without those behind the scenes at Podium Esports. James Pike, Gary Sexton, Cisco Scaramuza, and John Theodore. We want to say thank you so much for watching tonight's broadcast of the PCA Sim Racing Series presented by Haggerty Motorsports. I'm Taylor Burris, and we hope to see you tomorrow night from Barber.